All right, this is section 5.3, day two, and we're gonna continue solving different types of trig equations in order to find uh, what angles we can use. And today we're just gonna jump into slightly, uh, I don't wanna say more complicated, but just a little bit more in depth problems. So yesterday's assignment was a little straightforward, kind of solve for X and then there you go. Today we're gonna, you can see we're gonna do some foiling. We've got some double or triple angle happening here and a half angle happening here. So we'll do a few different of those types. So you kind of see a bunch of different types of problems in order to solve for X. So the first one has got um, three different terms, one, two, three. And anytime you've seen that in the past, like if I just take the signs out and kind of simplify it, this would be a factoring question. Um, so we'll have our two sign up front and another sign, that's how we would make squared and then we are gonna try and multiply to one. So the only way you can do that is with a one and a one. And we have to somehow add to negative one. So my two must be negative and my one would be positive. And once we're factored, we take each one of those, two sine x plus one, and we set them equal to zero. We've been doing that for a while. Anytime we factor, um, that's kind of how we end up solving is by setting each factor equal to zero. So now taking our one, subtracting it over and dividing by two, I would end up with a negative half. And what we're doing is looking for all the angles that have a sign of negative half. So grabbing my unit circle, looking around my circle for any sign values of negative half, there's one and there's the other. So we've got 210 and 330. Don't forget that degree symbol because you are telling me that you're giving it to me in degree mode or answer instead of in radian. Um, next up, we've got this side. So we need to set this equal to, well, we already set equal zero. We need to solve for x, so we're gonna add that over. And what we're doing is looking for any angles that have a sign of one. So I'll grab my unit circle again, and I'm looking for sine values of one and that happens at 90 degrees. So we've got three different answers for this one. We've got 210, 330, and 90. Next up, we've got a cosecant of three theta equals two. Um, and we don't have any cosecants on our circle, but cosecant does go with sine. So if we figure out the sine value, then we can use the reciprocal of that. We can just flip that over in order to find the one that we're uh, looking for. So I'm gonna flip right away. This two over one is really gonna become, sorry sign, is really gonna become a one half. So what I'm doing is looking for all the angles that have a sign of one half, which we kind of did in the last one, only we were doing negative half. So they're gonna be really close. Positive half is 30 and 150. So the two angles I get are 30 and 150. And now if you look at this little three here, if I asked you to keep solving for theta, hopefully you would say I need to divide by three. And I would say yes, yes you do. Uh, but first, this is also implying that we now need to go three times around our circle. Uh, it's saying that there are three times as many answers for us to go find. Usually when I'm saying how many angles have a sine of one half, there's always a pair. We can always find the two that are supposed to go there. Just like this, we had negative half, there were two that did that. If I ask for cosine of half, there are two that do that. So there's always two for us to find. This three is telling us that we want actually triple the answers. We wanna go around our circle three times and find all the answers, which seems kind of weird because there's only two places where I am a half. That's here and here. Um, and if I go around the circle again, I still land here and here. The only difference is the angle is slightly bigger. So instead of being 30 degrees, I would be 390 degrees, but I would still be at the same dot. I would still be at the same Y value. We're just looking to go around the circle three times. So we're gonna take the two answers that we got on our circle and we're gonna add 360. We're gonna go around the circle again, which will essentially give us um, 390 is what I just said and 5.7, well, 5.10. And then we have to do it again. So we're flying around the circle one more time. So this will be 7.50, and this will be 8.70. So now that we have all six answers, now we're gonna divide by three. And when I do that, I end up with 10 degrees, 50, 130, 170, 
250 and 290. All of these are inside one time around the circle. They are all from zero to 360. So even though we went around the circle three times and we had these really huge numbers, when we end up dividing by three, we actually shrink down. We actually cut our angles in thirds to a place where they're still within one rotation of the circle. So these are all of the different angles that when I plug them in here and I times them by three, I get half for my answer. So if I took a 10 and I plugged it in there, 10 times three is 30, and we know the sign at 30 is a half. If I took 250 and plugged it in there times three, it would be 750, and we know that um, 750 is just three times around the circle, and landing there, still a half. So that triple is telling you there's more answers, and in the end, your answers still need to be from zero to 360, so you only have what happens within one rotation of the circle. Next up, we've got a half. So if a three meant three times as many answers, a half should probably mean about half as many answers. So if normally we get two answers, we probably will only have one here. So I've got secant of a half equals negative two, and remember that's over a one, because so I don't have any secants on my circle. So I'm gonna flip that to a cosine, and the only thing that flips is the value and the trig, not the angle, so the angle stays. And then we're looking for our, on our circle where the cosine is negative half. Um, and that happens right here at 120, and it happens here at 240. So if you were to say, but now in order to solve for theta, I would need to multiply by two, I would say you're right, let's multiply by two. So this would end up being 240. This would end up being 480, and that's outside of our one circle rotation. So remember, we want all our answers to be from zero to three pi. So get rid of that one, and that's my only possibility, which kind of matches what we thought was gonna happen when we thought there would be half as many answers. So we only had one answer as opposed to our normal two answers. Um, just a little bit of quadrant info, just to remind you, we did this a little bit in chapter four, uh, but sine, oh sorry, what happens when our angle isn't on our circle? So when you have to resort to using your calculator, you need to know the little, little bit of extra information about how you're gonna find the other value. Um, so sine is 180 minus your angle, whatever you got. That's because sine is positive, positive, and minus, minus. So no matter which angle I get, if I do 180 and I subtract that angle, um, I'll find my match to it. Cosine is 360 minus your angle, and that's because cosine is positive, positive, minus, minus in this way. So no matter what angle you get, if you did 360, you would end up with its match. Tangent is always a bear. It is either plus or minus 180, depending on which way, or sorry, which value your uh, calculator gives you. So if you get a value in the first quadrant, you can easily add 180, that's no big deal. But if you get a value down here, you need to subtract 180 to go back. And we'll do one of these so that you see what that looks like. Um, yeah, I think we've got them all down here ready to go. So the first one says six sine theta plus one. So I'm first gonna minus the one divide by six. So I've got a sine theta equals negative one six. So then you go, that's not in my circle. Yep, you're right, it isn't. So let's do it on the calculator. So I'm looking for theta is all the signs that are a negative one sixth. So I get to do sine inverse and then negative one sixth. Um, I also suggest that you're in degree mode so that your answers make sense to you. You can do this in radian. Um, I just think it's a little more complicated for students because you have to think in then you have to think in radian mode and if your answers make sense instead of being in degree. So my first one is negative nine point five nine degrees. And since I negative five, okay. And since I want all my answers to be one rotation around the circle, that means we want them all to be positive. And negative nine is like right there, measuring kind of the wrong way. So I'm going to add 360. And now that's just the positive version of that angle. So instead of being negative nine degrees, what I really am is 350.41. That's my one good angle. And now just like your unit circle, there should be a second one somewhere. There should be a second one that has the exact same 
sine value and unfortunately even if you enter this again into your calculator your calculator is not going to tell you a different answer it's only going to tell you one answer and that actually comes from the work we did in 4.7 with inverses and having to restrict them so sine can only spit you out answers that are in the first and fourth quadrant so this one's trying really hard to help you find that one uh, but all it can do is give you this negative 9. So we have to find the other value. And that's where this little trick comes in. So we can do 180. And we can subtract our angle. Either one of these will work just fine. So I'll just subtract that angle right there. And our other angle then is 189.59. I'll do 180 minus the 50, so you can, or 350, so you can see how that works. So minus 351.41. But we would be negative, and we don't want that, so we'll add 360 because that um, going one time around the circle turns any negative angle positive, and we would be exactly where we found it at 159 or 189.59. Next up, we've got a secant. Well, we know that's related to cosine, so let's subtract that 2 over. So we'll end up with 3. And then we'll divide by 2, so we'll end up with 3 halves. And then we'll flip secant to become cosine, which will flip this to be 2 thirds. And now we're going to do what angles have a cosine of 2 thirds. Again, not on my unit circle. So we grab our calculator and co oops, cosine inverse 2 thirds gives me about 48.19. Well, that's nice. I didn't have to figure anything out. We didn't have to do any adding of 360 because we were a positive angle, and that works out good. Um, so when I look at my little chart here, that's a positive angle here. I need the other one that's down here, uh, but I don't know how to get that one. So that's where this little trick comes in. So 360 minus the angle we got gives us 311.8. So those are my two angles that will work in this one. One more to go, doing cotangent. Um, so we'll add 5 and divide by 4. 5 over 4. Uh, so we'll flip this into tangent to 4 fifths. And again, we are looking for all the tangents. I'm oh, sorry, all the angles that have a tangent of 4 fifths. That's not on my unit circle. So I do a tangent inverse, 4 fifths. And I am about 38.66 degrees. It's really nice. Uh, but it's not helping me find my other one. And in my little chart, I should have one that's down here matching. Um, so to get that, in this case, we could add 180. So right now we're at 38 degrees. That's a total quadrant one angle. So to find the opposite side, we would just add 180 to get there. Add 180, and I'm at 218.65. Um, hopefully you notice that we also have this complication of having a 2 in front. So just like above, we're going to have to do another loop around the circle. So we've got these two, but then we'll add 360 and add 360 and get our third and fourth answers, which will be 398.6 and 578.6. Now take all of these and divide by 2. So in the end, my answers are 19.3, 109.3, and 289.3. So since we had a 2, we needed to go one more time around the unit circle. We had to find all these extra values. So we were adding 360 to loop around the circle. And then once we had them all, that's when we divided by 2. Divide them all by 2. And that's how we ended up with those four. So doing just a slightly more difficult level of solving today, um, still kind of the same concepts, just using a lot of different properties of trig in order to solve.